Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I'm great. I'm gonna plant some stuff and I'm really excited about it. It's a beautiful day, late March. Not a lot going on outside right now or even inside. You know, there's a quarantine thing going on. I don't know when you're watching this. So I told myself if I spent two hours inside cleaning and organizing that I could come outside and play with the plant. Got my dogs here, Tucker. You enjoying your outdoor time, Tucker? Having fun? I think he actually just kind of wants to go inside, which is a bummer. That bums me out. He usually likes to be outside, but you know, old dogs. What I have planned for this is to use this Magnolia. I know, it's looking a little bit rough. It's a Bracken's Brown Beauty. I've had it for a few years. It's in a small pot. It needs to be moved up into a larger pot. I actually got this Magnolia on clearance years ago from a local nursery with the intent of having it around for fall, winter, early spring, just to have some interest outside and in a pot so I can move it around, mostly between my front and backyard. So I think it will look better on my front porch during the summertime. I have a corner where I could push this back. I can talk about all that once I get it planted up. The main thing is that I need to get it into a pot because the poor thing is just done. It is not having that little nursery can it's in anymore. I'm thinking it will appreciate this nice big container a lot more. Here I have some all-purpose potting mix that I've added some bark chips to and a pretty good amount of compost to kind of liven it up and I, my eyes are always bigger than my planters. So I have like a sketch drawn out of what I wanted to do here but I don't, I don't think it's all gonna fit, but I'm gonna try. I wanna get a mixture of annuals and perennials in here. Hey, there's my shed. Hello, hi from my shadow. Bye, Tucker. That's enough talking. Let's get planting. Was that fun for you? I decided I'd rather talk my way through this one because like I said, my eyes are bigger than my pots. And I think sometimes it can be useful to kind of go through the mindset and the process of how the decisions are made for what's going to go into what. So I originally, the original plan here was to have the big magnolia there in the middle, which is, I mean, that's the main point of this planter. It's a combination of annuals and perennials. That way there's only certain things that need to be swapped out throughout the year because most of the spring annuals, they don't really do great here during the summertime with the exception of the lobularia, the alyssum. They can usually, t they like the cool. Sometimes they fizzle out a little bit in the middle of the summer and give them a good cut back and then they bounce back and they keep going well into fall, at least where I am up here in zone six. Sometimes when we get going with these planters, you like you have an idea in your head of what you want to do, and then you start to pick up the plants and go, wait a minute, you know, maybe this isn't going to work. For example, back here I have this 4D African daisy. It is an absolutely beautiful plant. But they like a lot of sun. Most of the plants here that I have picked out are good for part to full sun, and this will get a really good amount of morning light, little bit of light into the afternoon, then it'll be dappled throughout the rest of the day, which is fantastic for something like an azalea or um, boxwoods, which can go full to part to even full shade sometimes, depending on where you live. Then I also have this sweet flag down here, which again can go part to full. That's gonna be the case for pretty much everything here. The primulas, aren't these beautiful? Absolutely gorgeous, double kind of a creamy white, almost a meringue colored bloom on them. Those do prefer full sun, but once the heat of the summer gets here, they'll do better with afternoon shade and just morning light. And it really even then, they don't tend to do great once it gets um, hot outside. I guess I shouldn't talk too much about the care right now. But in a nutshell, I just, there's so many things I wanna put in here, but there's not gonna be room. What am I gonna do? Well, I know that that African daisy back there, that's not going to do great in here. It's going to want more light than it's going to get with everything. And it's not just the light. The plants that I'm putting in here, particularly the azalea, they're going to want a decent amount of irrigation. You can see, uh oh, yeah, it's supposed to see that. Yeah, I left a pot out. Yeah, I don't think that that's going to get the amount of light that it would want. There's also a heliotrope down here. Uh, that's probably not going to get enough light either, but it smells so nice that I really wanted it to be where this planter is going to be going, but it's okay, I can stick it in something else. And then I also have tons, tons of hookahs that are just starting to wake back up from their winter rest. They're still in their nursery containers. And I, some of them would just look beautiful in this. So but what's going on here is that this was originally going to be a springtime planter, but I think I'm going to transition it a little bit more over to an evergreen perennial planter with some annuals tucked into it. That just makes the most sense to me. I think that I'll be able to get the most bang for the space with this. Is that, is that a saying? That's not a saying. Okay, talk my way through it. Back to work. 
I think I want to use one of these sweet flags in here. This is a little bit too big, so I'm going to go ahead and try to divide this up. They're really easy to divide. This is the right time of year for it. It should just kind of pull apart there. Well, that's a big worm. There's a very, very big worm in here. That's okay, I'm gonna leave it in here. It's good for the soil, good for the plants, no big deal. And in front of this, I'm thinking a hookara. This is just the spring growth, right? It's gonna get a lot bigger than this. And then I, that makes me wanna put another hookara in here. What about, I'm torn between making sure that they match and just going with different ones. I'm gonna go ahead and use this this one right here. This is fine. And toss in some of these beautiful primulas. They have really nice roots on them. I have to take a lot of soil out to get these in, which is good. I don't really like to disturb the roots on these when I plant them. It sets them back a little bit. They can kind of throw a fit. So I'm just going to dig this out as big as I can and pop them all in here. And then, of course, one of my favorite annuals, some Alyssum, Lobularia. Smell great. They have a lot of texture. Of course, water it in. Very important. Especially some of these were a little bit dry. I try to not plant things when things are bone dry, but it, I just I didn't realize that they were dry when I started. So that's not great. The roots and the plants crack a lot more easily if they aren't hydrated. So I'm really going to give this a heavy soak and done. I like it. Things are a mess. It's okay. I'm gardening. That's how things go out here. Got my raggedy looking magnolia in there with the azalea in the back. I mean, y'all know what's in here. We just did this together. Go ahead and talk about what's in here though in a little bit more depth. So, well, for starters, this is the magnolia. That's what started this whole thing. I know it's raggedy looking. All of this brown foliage that will fall off on its own. That's just from the winter time. It's in a container and I'm in zone six. The Bracken's Brown Beauty magnolia is technically a dwarf, but it still gets 30 to 50 feet. So it won't be in this container for its entire life, obviously. I'll talk about that more at the very end of the video. Even debated giving it a little bit of a prune, but I can see it has a lot of leaves and a lot of foliage getting ready to flush out so I'm gonna let it do its thing see where it decides to grow before doing any major pruning on that and just to the side Encore Azalea this is the autumn carnation I've talked about this in at least one video I think my last vlog They're one of my favorite of the Encore Azaleas unfortunately it's not like exploding with flowers right now they only get I think four and a half feet high by four feet wide which is big right? That's not going to be able to stay in here forever. Again, I'll talk about that at the end of the video. Uh, the Encore Azaleas are fantastic because they'll repeat bloom throughout the year. As long as you stay on top of their pruning and fertilizing, then usually you can expect a second set of blooms in the summertime. It's not usually a big show, but they put out a few. And then uh, usually a nice set of blooms again in the fall. And it's an evergreen azalea with really, really pretty foliage. The new foliage comes out this lighter green color, and then the old foliage deepens into a darker green shade, and they're slightly fuzzy. And you can sort of see there's kind of a reddish hint on there on the stems that are pushing out the new leaves. One of the reasons I really like this azalea. The medium-sized flower that are pink semi-double and they're roughly like two and a half inches across. The name carnation is really fitting for this one because the flowers they were very reminiscent of a dianthus. Like light shade to full sun about full, like I think I said before don't remember if I talked about it or not morning sun and then afternoon dappled light depending on your climate. If it's really hot then it doesn't need to be in tons and tons of sun but for best blooming they will need more sunlight. And they like the magnolia which I forgot to mention do prefer a slightly acidic soil. I don't have any holly tone or any types of amendments right now so they're just gonna have to hold on and hang in there until I can get out and get some that might be a while my city's under quarantine and I wouldn't consider soil amendment to be a top priority if I were to leave the house so they're like I said they're just gonna have to hang on should be fine though I'm not really too concerned about it I did add some compost into that potting mix and then some sand and whatnot so it should be right around a neutral level to slightly acidic as it is that was a lot about the azalea if I do that for every single one of these this video is gonna go on forever and then just in front of that, I have one of the Dolce Silver Gumdrop Hookeras from Proven Winners. They're a sun to shade, which is one of the reasons I love them. And pretty much all of the Hookeras is that they have some versatility. There will be some differences in their growth, depending on where you put them as far as light is concerned. The Dolce Silver Gumdrop, this one is just stunning. It has beautiful silvery foliage with these nice reddish pink undertones to it. It's small just like the other hooker that's in here because this is just their spring growth. So that's going to fill back out and really kind of take in that spot that's there, but that's okay. They stay short, just about six to eight inches. Their hardy zones four through nine. Where I live, they're semi evergreen, which is really nice. You still get some foliage to look at during the winter time and they bloom early to midsummer. The flowers are these nice long stalks that come up from them with these 
pretty kind of dainty pink flowers. They're really airy and have a nice texture to them. That lighter color that's on the foliage that's almost metallic-y, that is something I like to have planted back into the depths of the planters because it helps pull the eye back, lights up at nighttime, which is something I kind of tried to maintain throughout this entire planter because it's going near a coach light. And that'll help illuminate what's going on down here at nighttime in the back. It's hard to see right now, but that is a variegated sweet flag. They can actually go part shade into full sun. They're very sturdy, resilient plants. They grow very quickly. It's it's looking a little bit ratty. I might need to do some cleaning up on this, but that's okay. No big deal. I can do that very easily. It's just going to add a nice texture behind everything. I like to have things in my planters that will kind of move in the wind and just sort of set things apart a little bit. And in front of that, well, you can't even see it, can you? That's another hookura. It's the Primo Peachberry Ice. This one and then the Dolce Silver Gumdrop are probably some of my favorite hookeras for sure. They have beautiful orangish, reddish foliage on them that is heavily veined that contrasts into sort of a creamy color within that foliage. Again, it's a sun to shade. This one does get a little bit bigger than the Dolce Silver Gumdrop, getting about 8 to 10 inches high. Again, hardy zones 4 through 9. It'll bloom midsummer just like the other one. And like I said, sun through shade. So it's another versatile plant. I know, it's hidden. You can't even see it right now, but it will be able to in a few weeks. And right here in front of the Magnolia, in front of the Alyssum, the Lobularia, is the Bellarinum Buttercup Primrose. Isn't it beautiful? They have fully double flowers and rich colors that bloom profusely throughout the season each variety of the hardy bellarina series is unique and refined in style outstanding in beds and borders or in containers or window boxes i just read the tag was that obvious i just i didn't i, I just read the tag i will say the tag the flowers look yellow and these are more of a creamy like i said before kind of a meringue sort of color to them but aren't the flowers on these just absolutely beautiful they're not quite white they're not quite green they're not quite yellow they're just perfect. Look at 6 to 12 inches high, 6 to 12 inches wide. They prefer things semi-moist. They bloom in the springtime. Hardy zones minus 10 through minus 20. But what's that? Zone 5? Yeah, that should be a zone 5 plant. And then alternating throughout the front of the planter here. Oh, those leaves don't look very good. Let's focus on one that looks a little bit better. Alternating throughout the front of the planter. This is the uh, Snow Princess Lobularia. It's an alyssum. It's a short 4 to 8 inches tall with a spread of about 24 inches or so. The Snow Princess gets it gets really big. They're only hardy of perennial zones 9 and up, but they make an excellent annual. They're like full to part sun. They are heat tolerant, don't need to deadhead them, and the flowers are fragrant. That is what I love about Lobularia, about Alyssum, is the smell. They smell fantastic. It's something any place that I have that has a seating area around it or doorways, entryways where people are moving around, I love to have Alyssum because it, the smell, it's intoxicating. It's strongest in the morning and in the evening, but you can still smell it throughout the day, especially if you have a lot of it planted, and I plant a lot of Alyssum. And it should be the same case with these purple ones in the front. This is Lobularia Deep Lavender Stream, and the everything about it should be pretty much the same. 8 to 10 inches tall, it says space 12 to 16 inches on the tag, which I don't know, I guess that that's their way of saying it gets 12 to 16 inches wide. I don't know, we'll find out. Killing habit, yeah, okay, so I'm looking at the tag here. Pretty much all the same information there, but it will probably be a little bit smaller than the Snow Princess. I can't say for sure, though, because I haven't actually grown the Deep Lavender before. Like I mentioned, this is a seasonal planter, a multi-seasonal planter. I want to make sure there is a combination of perennials and annuals in here. When the heat of the summer starts to get here, really mid-spring, I'll have to pull these primulas out, which is why I wasn't really too worried about overcrowding them back there with the hookeras, because right around the time when these hookeras in here start to take off, the primulas are going to need to be moved into more shade. Where I live, the summers are really hot late spring into summer and even early fall so for me they do the best when i pull them and move them into deep deep shade for that like two to three month period sometimes it's four months and where they'll get just like a little bit of morning sun and then i can pull them back out in the fall can move them into getting a little bit more light and they start to kind of spring back into life but they just they don't do great with like super super hot heat especially if we have a wet summer so those are going to be coming out they'll be in there for a few months they look pretty and then i'll move them somewhere else maybe pop them back in here in the spring or just do something else with them put them into like a basket something cocoa line that can stay nice and cool and in place of them i'll probably put like some small begonias with white flowers on them 
or even like a double impatient might look pretty in there though that might get to be a little bit too large for this i have to wait and see what goes on with the hookahs if the hookahs do what they should do then there might not be room for all that which is fine i don't think it has to be absolutely jam-packed with plants all the time for it to look pretty and this is probably i would say a two to three year planter the magnolia the azalea they're definitely going to outgrow this and need to be pulled out i'm aware this will be nice to have during the particularly the fall and winter and early spring when there's nothing else going on outside and there'll still be these little evergreens and whatnot kind of placed around i like the way that looks so every spring i'll pull some of the old soil out and then i'll freshen it up with some nice compost to help re-enrich it you, know, you don't want to leave things in the same pot for too many years because you start to lose a lot of the nutrient load that's down there it's important to make sure that the soil stays fresh every single spring right it's not practical with something like this to pull it and <laughs> change the soil every single year but it's also not that hard to go in and just pull some of the soil out from the surface and then replace that with something that's nice and rich and that'll work its way down and help liven things back up a little bit for everything the spot where this is going to go it will be able to stay there for about like two or three months and then it gets swapped out with a palm tree and then at that point i will be moving this entire container probably to my front porch it will just get morning sun i have had a planted in the area where this pot will be going and it still did quite well it in the uh, heat of the summer like usually july ish somewhere around there i need to go in and give them a cut back usually like 50 percent if not more to get them to fill back out they'll start to get kind of long and stringy and just sad looking this helps to give them that prune they'll fill back out and look really nice and put on a fresh show of flowers and then since they'll be near my front door anytime people are coming or going they'll be greeted by that wonderful aroma from the alyssum that was fun definitely it's a container garden because it's something where i'm going to be putting things in and swapping them out and i'll get to keep playing with it which i really enjoy joy and uh, none of this is going to go to waste i'm not just going to throw them away as the seasons change i'll move them and do different things with them oh and i don't see what look like flower buds on here as of right now but i should have mentioned one of the greatest things about the magnolia isn't just that they're evergreen but that they have these really big beautiful white flowers in the spring sometimes into early summer that smell amazing they have kind of a lemony citrusy scent to them it's very similar to a gardenia they, they smell fantastic and when the flowers die off they leave behind these cones that are like it's hard to describe them they look almost like a cone that you would see on like a sago palm or something they have these really big red seeds in them it's really pretty you get many seasons of interest out of a magnolia what are some things you guys have going on in your gardens are you ready starting to plan things out i know it's difficult right now i got lucky i was able to go out before the stuff started to happen i'm not leaving the house now as it is just staying home to be safe hopefully we can get outside if possible keeping you distance from people but still getting to enjoy some fresh air it's still early just having a nice day here don't i don't typically get to planting things quite like this until usually like mid-april but i was like you know what there's no, i gotta get outside i gotta blow some energy off and play with plants it's something we all could use a lot more of right now right i will keep things updated on my social media as this fills out you know right after you plant something things look kind of sad sometimes it takes a few days so i'll put some stuff up on instagram into my stories as the alyssum kind of bounces back and those primolas start to stand up a little bit stronger right, i hope everybody's doing well having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautiful for you in spite of all what's going on right now forget to like the video subscribe all that youtube stuff hit that notification bell that we know new videos come out oh and if my voice has been kind of weird during this video it's because i'm trying to talk at a lower tone to preserve my voice because i'm trying to upload more but sometimes i talk so much in these videos that i lose my voice so i'm just trying to trying to gain some vocal stamina there it might not even be an issue i don't know i don't have headphones on who knows how i sound all right as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye